Good morning. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Easter. I hope that your Easter was a joyous celebration, both here at church and amongst your families. Uh, being between calls, I kind of took the opportunity to worship with my own family, so that was kind of, kind of a treat uh, to be with the kids and all that. Um, are there any announcements this morning from any of you before we begin our worship? Yes. <laughs> the next step, right? Yeah, great, great. Any other announcements? If not, I invite you uh, to stand as we sing together our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The reading is from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out 
or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a godly heritage, a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure, for you do not give me up to show, or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The gospel reading is from the 20th chapter of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said them again, said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Grace and peace to you, dear brothers and sisters, from God the Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our sight and our vision. It is a very important way that we connect to the world and to one another. Many of us may wear glasses or contact lenses to help us see better or to prevent blurry vision. 
when my daughter kept getting worse and worse vision after each annual appointment, her doctor told us of a new sort of treatment called orthokeratology, or ortho-K for short. Basically, it is contact lenses that you just wear at night, and it reshapes your cornea, and then you can see plenty fine during the day. Not cheap, but we decided that we would try this out for her. Basically, the optometrist says they are like braces for your eyes. They lock your, your current prescription in place. So get, come back to me in 10 years, and we'll see, see if, if it was worth all the money there. Yes, our vision is quite important. And yet, in today's gospel, we hear, blessed are those who do not see and yet believe. In 2017, a New York Times columnist, Frank Bruni, woke up to blurry vision. And from that moment on, his life changed suddenly forever. He writes, I woke up with a fog over the right side of my vision. I thought for hours that there must be some gunk in my eye. Then I thought, oh no, it must be my eyeglasses. I just have to clean them. And on and on until deep in the day, I realized that there was something wrong beyond all of that. Bruni was 52, and he would never regain vision in that eye. He had experienced a rare kind of stroke that permanently damaged his optic nerve. And there was a strong possibility that another stroke would impact his good eye. The news brought shock and terror. It led Bruni to do some deep inner emotional and spiritual work. He had a choice. He could fixate on what he had lost or focus on all the blessings that still remained. I ended up determined, he said, determined to show myself that I could adapt to whatever was going to happen. You could say that Frank Bruni learned how to see in new ways, how to have faith amidst all circumstances. Bruni wrote a book called The Beauty of Dusk on vision lost and found. And in it, he says that sometimes he is taking in visual information that he did not before. He writes, I'm focusing on certain details with my one good eye in a way that I never had with my two good eyes. An example of just how nimble our brains and bodies can be when circumstances demand it. Because as we age, he says, we are all going to lose certain physical capabilities and be asked to make certain adjustments and compensations. Vision. You could say that there is a lot of blur in today's gospel. The disciples are filled with fear as they sit behind the locked doors after Jesus' crucifixion. They are trying to somehow make sense of Jesus' death. It was an unexpected turn of events. But then Jesus himself shows up amongst them, amongst the closed doors, and says, Peace be with you. They can't believe their eyes. Are they really seeing Jesus among them, speaking words of peace, commissioning them to be his hands and feet in the world? The blur of their grief turns to resurrection joy except that Thomas was not with them. Thomas, who always appears on this second Sunday of Easter, asking the hard questions, revealing doubt and uncertainty. Thomas often gets a bad rap, but maybe, just maybe, he could be considered the patron saint of all who grapple with questions and doubt. Thomas indeed shows us that wrestling with the hard questions is indeed part of the faith journey. Unless I can see and touch the wounds, I will not believe, Thomas says. A week later, Thomas is again with the other disciples, and Jesus appears once again. 
Jesus invites Thomas to see and touch his wounds. This hard-to-believe good news of resurrection is standing right before him. And Thomas declares, my Lord and my God. Now, we often might think of the primary symbols of Easter as a lily, a butterfly, the cross, or the empty tomb. I'm guessing most would hesitate to add wounds or scars to that list. And yet, Jesus' wounds are the sign of his suffering and death on our behalf, reminding us that the cross and resurrection Wounds and beauty, sorrow and joy are forever intertwined. Now what about the scars that you and I carry? Our scars are a a part of us. They tell a story. Maybe it's a story of a successful surgery or an accident survived. Jesus' scars also tell a powerful story. By his wounds, we are healed. We are healed from all of our hurts and the bruises we receive simply by living in this world. Yes, we all have our fears and our struggles, but we also have triumphs and resiliency. The New York Times columnist Frank Bruni tells such stories of people that learned to see with new eyes and the blessing that emerged from their blurry vision. Amidst our own fears, our own doubts, amidst our own blurry vision, the risen Christ comes among us again this day and says, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As Jesus says to those first disciples, he says also to us, Peace. And now may the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Together let us stand as you are able as we sing together our hymn of the day.
Together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join now together in prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this time where we may gather in your name. And as we look outside and notice the buds and the green grass, signs of new life, remind us too that we have new life in you because of what you did for us on the cross. We pray that you would be with us in all of our questions and doubts and struggles, just as you were with Thomas, not abandoning him, but giving him the assurance that he needed. So too, assure us with your presence with us amidst all circumstances. Lord, we also lift up to you the companion synods of the Maru Diocese, Tanzania and El Salvador, Reformation Milwaukee, and all who struggle with health issues, including Judy, Wendy, Larry, Nancy, Harriet, Ted, Nancy, Sharon, Marge, Ruth, Aaron, Angie, Anna and Brock, Kevin, Todd, Andy, Elnetta and Ken, Jeffrey, Randine, Adela, Karen, Michael, Noah, Paul, Mary Pat, Philip, Flynn, David, Jim, Sandy, and all who live with mental illness, and all who suffer with hunger, homelessness, poverty, and violence. Lord, gather up these prayers that we lift up before you out loud and in the silence of our hearts, trusting that you do indeed hear our prayers and are amongst us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, let us pray as our Lord Jesus has first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the table. You may be seated. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Please stand now as you are able as we sing together our sending hymn.
God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go now in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 